Burundi and Rwanda have agreed to meet and normalize their relations. This comes after deteriorating ties between the two countries led to the closure of their mutual borders. Moses Javier Rimana reports. Burundi and Rwanda officials are set to meet by 31st October to discuss outstanding issues affecting their bilateral relations. The move was agreed during a retreat of the ministers responsible for the East African Community Affairs and ministers of Foreign Affairs from the eight member states on Monday in Zanzibar. Olivier Ndungirehe is Rwanda's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. We agreed that we will discuss and solve our issues bilaterally. We agreed uh, to meet uh, by uh, 31st of October this year in order to go through uh, the pending issues, outstanding issues that are between uh, the two countries. And uh, we have demonstrated, uh, Minister Albert Shingiro uh, and I, that uh, we are committed to uh, find solution uh, for uh, the brotherly people of Rwanda and Burundi. Through his ex-account, formerly known as Twitter, Burundi's Foreign Affairs Minister Albert Shingiro said that a diplomatic window is a powerful tool for resolving conflicts, tensions and paradoxes between states. Burundi had closed its borders with neighboring Rwanda in January, paralyzing transborder trade. Jean Bosco Kalisa is the chief executive officer of the East African Business Council. We really applaud and appreciate the revolution uh, that was signed in Zanzibar and uh, really urge you, all the partners, all the parties, to fast track the implementation of the revolution. And this is going to really restore our trade and investment across the region. In January, Burundi closed all its land borders with neighboring Rwanda, accusing Kigali of supporting a rebel group based in DRC that attacked and killed dozens of people in the country last year. Rwanda has repeatedly denied the allegations. Fred Mkasambide is an East African analyst and vice president of the Democratic Party in Uganda. He says that peace between the two countries could revamp their economies and trade. The Zanzibar meeting obviously gives East Africa a breath of life, particularly seeking to institutionalize peace support operations and of course a conclusion on fast tracking of the ESC Mutual Defense Pact. And the prescribed meeting between Burundi and Rwanda obviously then seeks to deliver the otherwise much needed intent that guarantees the net trade between the two countries that had alone had existed. So in my opinion, peace is more profitable between Burundi and Rwanda than anything to the contrary. The government of Burundi says that if relations are to be normalized, Rwanda should hand over former Burundian army officials and some opposition leaders. It accuses of plotting the failed coup in 2015 to host former President Pierre Nkurunziza. Moses Aviarimana for Voice of America. Rwanda has fully upheld its side of the agreement, including with regard to finances and remains committed to finding solutions to the global migration crisis, including providing safety, dignity, and opportunity to refugees and migrants who come to our country, said Rwanda in a statement issued on Monday evening. Kigali's statement came days after the new UK government decided to terminate the controversial deportation plan. The Labour leader and now new Prime Minister, Sir Keel Stammer, this past weekend announced that the Rwanda scheme was dead and buried before it started, adding it's never been a deterrent. Stammer emphasized that his government was not prepared to continue with agreements that don't act as a deterrent, describing the plan as a problem that we are inheriting. In response, the Rwandan government has said that the plan was initiated by UK, not Rwanda. Rwanda takes note of the intention of the UK government to terminate the Migration and Economic Development Partnership Agreement as provided for under the terms of the treaty passed by both our parliaments, said Kigali. This partnership was initiated by the government of the UK in order to address the crisis of irregular migration affecting the UK, a problem of the UK, not Rwanda. The former Conservative government introduced this plan in April 2022, intending to relocate illegal migrants who arrived in Britain. 
The Conservative government announced that any asylum seeker entering the UK illegally after January 1st, 2022 from a safe country like France could be sent to Rwanda. Their asylum claims would be processed in Rwanda instead of the UK. If their claims were successful, they could be granted refugee status and permitted to stay in the East Central African country. Under the Rwanda deal, the UK government would provide fixed cost development funding to Rwanda as well as per person development payments and per person processing and integration payments. According to an investigation by the National Audit Office, the development funding comprised a fixed cost of Euro 370 million up to 2026 to 2027, plus an additional Euro 120 million once 300 people are relocated to Rwanda. An additional Euro 20,000 would be paid to the development fund for each person that is relocated. The UK government had paid Euro 240 million to Rwanda by the end of 2023. In addition to payments into Rwanda's development fund, the Home Office would send per person payments to Rwanda to cover asylum processing, operation costs, and an integration package for each relocated person. The integration package included accommodation, food, education, language training, and professional development. These payments would last up to the five years and total of Euro 150,874 per person. The UK government claimed that this measure would halt the influx of asylum seekers arriving in small boats. However, the plan was never implemented due to prolonged legal battles. In April 2024, the UK Parliament approved the controversial law designating Rwanda as a safe third country, effecting bypassing a prior UK Supreme Court ruling that deemed the scream unlawful on human rights grounds. Authorities began detaining asylum seekers in May under this new legislation.